abundant family and friends. Welcome to Love AME Church. We thank you for worshiping with us on this morning on this very special Yaya Sunday. That's Youth and Young Adult Sunday Worship Service. We pray God's richest blessings over you and your family. God bless you all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Love AME. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise for allowing us to see a brand new day, for allowing us brand new mercies, grace on our lives, bringing us into the house of worship yet again. Amen. To fellowship with one another. That's a blessing. Amen. We come out this morning to give God all the praise, not some, but all of the praise. Because he's worthy of every praise. Hallelujah. The word says if we don't do it, we the people, the humans, he said he'd have the very rocks cry out in our place. And certainly we don't want that. We know how good God's been to us. And we should we ought to come in here to give him praise, to give him thanksgiving. So we're gonna do a little bit of old school. The song says, I love to praise. His holy name. It says this, I love to praise Him. Sing, I love to praise I love to praise Him.
Hallelujah. How many of us just want the blessing of God to rain down? The blessings on us, on our families, on our children, on their children, on their, sh on their children's children. We pray for generational blessings. Amen. We're just going to clear that in the atmosphere on this morning. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Listen, it is so.
We will now have prayer by Minister Tia. Father God, in the name of Jesus, first and foremost, thank you for everything that you've done, everything that you're doing, everything that you're getting ready to, to do, God. We thank you that the blessings are not just upon us, but they're on our generations to come. And we thank you that even now you're the same God of our children and our children's children and their children's children. And we thank you already for meeting even them where they are. God, we thank you for, this pre for your presence in this place. God, we ask that you touch those who are on their way, those who may be watching from a distance, God, and we ask that you meet every single one of them where they are. God, thank you for allowing us to just be in your house one more time. God, if we had 10,000 tongues, we know it wouldn't be enough, but you keep going to keep doing it anyway. And so we let out one big thank you, Lord, for everything. God, we ask that you touch the service, touch the speaker of the hour and let your presence dwell in them and in this place. Have your will and have your way. We give you yes to whatever it is you wanna do. Move us entirely out of the way. Not our service and not our program, but yours. We thank you, we love you, we honor you. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. We have a junior sis that's gonna come up and do, we can never have too much prayer, amen? Amen, she has a special prayer for us this morning. Come on, baby. God, bless this place on today. Help it be filled with the Holy Spirit. Help everyone's lives to be touched. Help people to be saved. Help them to be covered. Help those who are sick be healed. Help those who are well stay well. Help those who are homeless find a home. Help those and just bless everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Y'all give it up for our junior sis, Miss Zion. Thank you for that beautiful prayer and covering. All right, love. Uh, we have some announcements on this morning. Um, there are a few that I'd like to go over. And um, we have our church conference on August the 22nd. Please be sure to join us for that. It is at 7 p.m. via Zoom. And all are welcome to join us for that. In addition, don't forget, we have our August the 27th Summerfest at Lake Arbor Community Center. And it's from 12 noon to 4 p.m. It is going to be an absolutely fabulous day. We are giving away backpacks and school supplies. Um, there'll be live music and entertainment, outdoor games, vending machines, vending trucks. All are welcome to come. And it's absolutely free. Now I want to turn your attention to the monitors. We have some video announcements that we'd like to play. Here are your This Week at Love announcements. Believers Bible Study. Watch it on Facebook Live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Boss Life Bible Study. You don't want to miss this. Join us every Wednesday at 12 noon via Facebook Live for a powerful lunch and learn spiritual message. Daily inspiration. Text Love AME to 545454. That's three five fours to receive the daily inspirational text. All right, love agents, we have some upcoming events and I'm super excited about it in this 2022. Love agents, selfless living is the art of giving and God loves a cheerful giver. For your convenience, here are your online giving options.
right, love agents, July is coming to a close, but not without the continuous move of God. It's Yaya Sunday. That's Youth and Young Adults Sunday. Let's raise the praise on today. And that's not it. Kickstart your week with a Monday morning prayer call at 7.30 a.m. Calling all married couples. The Marriage Ministry presents Take a Stroll with Your Spouse. For the rest of July, take at least one stroll per week. We'd love to see pics, so take a selfie and submit. Love agents, family, and friends, we are dedicated to the safety of our members and guests. We conduct weekly tests for our unmasked ministers, pastor, and praise team. If you would like to donate tests, please bring them to the church and give them to our trusty protein, Brother Tony. We thank you in advance. God bless. Love agents, if you were blessed with July's action-packed blessings, get ready for August because it's fully loaded. Here's the rundown and you don't want to miss it. All right, love agents, here's our August Fresh Start Reload. And we're going to kick off our August the 4th with a BBS, that's Believer's Bible Study, with Reverend Royster, with a lesson that will surely change your life. And on August the 7th, our very own Minister Angelina will deliver a mighty word from the Lord on Communion Sunday. And on Sunday, August the 14th, our very own minister, Tia, will deliver a word from the Lord that will bless your soul. And on August the 11th, Sister Corinne will be gracing us with a BBS, that's Believer's Bible Study Lesson, on Thursday. And on August the 21st, our very own Reverend Dr. Jenkins will be delivering a word from the Lord. You don't want to miss that. And on August the 18th, our very own Reverend Dr. Gertie Hurley will deliver a word from the Lord on our BBS, that's Believer's Bible Study, that will surely change your lives. And on August the 28th, our very own Minister Steward will be delivering a powerful word from the Lord. Be sure to tune in for that. And last but not least, on August the 25th, be sure to join us for our Believer's Bible Study with Reverend Dr. Poe Ray delivering a word from the Lord that will surely bless your hearts. Those are your announcements for today. I'm Minister Angelina. Be blessed, healed, and filled with the radiant light of God. I dare you to trust God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, somebody. Somebody just go ahead and put your hands together and give God some glory because he's a mighty God. He's a loving God. He's a caring God. He's a God that's ever present. He's a God that is with us. Somebody say amen, amen, and amen. I don't know about you, but uh, I am excited to be in the house of God one more time. I realize it could be different. I do want to give a couple shouts out to uh, some of our folks who are watching at home. God bless you, Reverend Jenkins. God bless you, uh, Sister Kim. God bless you, Brother Willie. God bless you, Sister L. God bless you, Sister Armstrong and Brother Williams. God bless you, uh, uh, Brother Bam. God bless you for all of y'all that are And those that are in the house, we are so glad to see you on today. You know, God is an amazing God, and we are blessed to be in the house of God just one more time. Amen? Well, I want to go ahead and uh, check the house. I want to check the house and check the video stream, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube watching. Uh, You know, we got everybody watching from everywhere these days. But uh, if you celebrated an anniversary as Agape Praise comes, if you celebrated an anniversary either last week or this week, if you're in the house, would you please stand? And if you're watching on one of our streams, just type my anniversary. 
And we want to we want to uh, welcome you in a special love AME way. Amen. Right, all right, happy anniversary. Uh, and right now, if you had a birthday, either last week or this week, would you please stand? And or if you're at home, just type my birthday. Type my birthday, all right? We want to sing and celebrate your birthday right now. Shout out to India. Happy birthday to you, young lady. Happy birthday. Amen. Amen. We got a birthday? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought we had one in the pulpit. Amen. She said her birthday's all month. Her birthday's all month. Happy birthday month. Happy birthday month. All right, all right, all right. Last but not least, last but not least, if this is your first time at Love AME, uh, would you please stand? If it's your first time here at Love AME, would you please stand? And if it's your first time at uh, watching online, just type first time. Amen. Amen. Praise be unto God. Uh, we welcome you here to Love AME. We do have a special gift. They're going to bring it to you uh, on your left hand side, on your left hand side. Uh, we thank you for coming to Love AME Church. I'm Pastor Chris. I'm Pastor Chris, and we worship here every Sunday at 10 a.m. We also worship online on Facebook and on YouTube, and we're blessed to have you in the building. If you're a first-timer on the stream, just type first-timer, and we want to welcome you to what we call the Love Zone. Now, normally we do a lot of walking around and, and hand bumps and elbows, but today I'm going to ask that y'all just stand up and just wave at each other and smile, and if you're on the line, just throw the heart signs up, and we want to welcome everybody to what we call the Love Zone. Scripture by Brother Malik. Good morning, love, AME. Good morning. Today I'll be reading today's scripture. It can be found in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 16 through 17. 
Once again, it is John chapter 15, verses 16 through 17. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. May the Lord add a word and a blessing to the reading of this word. Great job, young man. Great job, young man. Let's put our hands together for him. He didn't he do a wonderful job. And I love his willing heart. I, you know, uh, I said, brother, brother Malik, you want to read scripture today? He said, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> it was just sort of like that. Send me, I'll go. Whatever you need, I'm ready to go ahead and serve. It, it, this is about the kingdom. I'm going to do it, right? And he, and he did it with an excellent attitude and spirit, and I thank you for it. Amen? Praise be unto God. And while we add it on this, on this day, I want to just, wow. I want to just take a second and shout him out. I don't know about you, but he's been holding it down on that video something serious, hasn't he? Young brother in the house making it happen. We, and I just want to let you know your church family recognizes the work that you're doing. Amen? You could be anywhere, you could be home playing video games or doing anything, but you in the house of the Lord, and we just want to let you know we love you, Brother Malik. God bless you, young man. That's right, that's right. Let's stand up. Sometimes we got to celebrate them, right? Amen. Thank you. Thank you for how you serve in the house of God, amen. And let's shout out all our young people, amen. Y'all do a wonderful job, and we love you. Y'all are our future. So we want to sow seeds into you because the world will celebrate you when you do the wrong stuff, right? The world will celebrate you when you're acting out. The world will celebrate you when you're cutting up and when you're acting a fool. But we got to celebrate you for doing good stuff that you will keep on doing it. Somebody say amen. And as our young and beautiful uh, greeters, our youth greeters will come today. Amen. They're going to come with our baskets. I don't know about you, but I'm excited because it's time to give. It is time to give. Amen. All right. All right. Praise be unto God. Praise be unto God. We do want to let you know that we have electronic means by which you can sow your seed. You can give electronically on uh, Cash App, Dollar Sign, Love and Me. And on, um, you can just go to our website, loveamichurch.org backslash give. Amen? Amen. And so you're going to have to hold that a little higher. Hold, there you go. There we go. All right. All right. And so if you want to give via cash or check, you have envelopes for those in the house. If you got an envelope at home, just mail it in. You got the address. But either way, I just let you know. We can't be God. I thought somebody might catch that. We can't be God. We can't be God. That's right. We can't be God giving. Amen. And God just asked that we would give a tenth, that we would give a tithe. And so uh, I just dare you to try God. Uh, why do I say that? Because God says, try me. <laughs> he said, try me and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing more than you can receive. Amen. He'll also let you know that he'll rebuke the canker worm. See, they lived in an agricultural society, and so if they, if they didn't have cash. They didn't have no Benjamins. They had, they had uh, wheat, right? But if the canker worm came and ate all that they had produced, then they lost all their resources. Just like uh, you may have a, you may got the paycheck, but then this bill and that bill and that bill, and you be like, man, I can't keep a hold on my money. I can't accumulate. Well, God says, I got a plan for that. I'm going to pour you more than you can handle. And then even what I give you, I'm going to make sure the canker worm can't eat it up. Amen. And all I just say is there, try them. Last but not least, if you can't give cheerfully, keep it in your own pockets because we're operating on the faith stream. Amen. Give the best amount you can give. If you're not a tither, give the best amount you can give cheerfully. Amen? Give your best cheerfully. And we just believe in that as you give your best cheerfully, that God is going to continue to see and recognize your heart and increase you as you move along. Amen? 
Dear Father God, we just come humbly before you and we praise you, we magnify you and glorify you. And we ask, dear Lord, that you have your will and that you have your way. And bless these seeds and bless these tithes, oh God. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. If you're standing all over the church, if you would come from the right side towards that wall and you can come on down if you're giving physically in the basket. Just slide over a little bit right here. Amen. Amen. And if you give electronically, you can just tap it with your phone. Amen.
has, have, has any of you been in a situation where you don't know whether or not you should go left, you should go right? You felt like you were stuck between a rock and a hard place. And before you know it, right before your eyes got swooped in and turned that situation around, I know it hasn't been just me. I know God has swooped in when I didn't deserve it. I didn't earn it. A lot of other people in my shoes ended up somewhere else. But God swooped in and he said, not that one, not that one. His grace, his mercy, his unmerited favor, that is what rescued me. Anybody been rescued by, by Jesus? Anybody been rescued by God? Anybody ever come up to you and be like, well, how that happen? I don't know. I don't know. It's the grace of God. It's the mercy of God. I can't explain it to you. You got to try for yourself because it was up to Tim. I can't even tell y'all, but if it was up to Tia, only God knows where I would be. So this song just says, I was down in need of a savior. And then my soul cried out to thee. I was down in need of a savior. And my soul cried out to me. Say, I was down in need of a savior. And then my soul, it cried out. This is what happened. You rescued me. You rescued me. You rescued me. Come on, is this is anybody testimony? You rescued me. Say 
Somebody give God some honor. Somebody give God some glory. Somebody give God some praise. I, I, I don't know. I dare declare that I, I know with a shadow of a doubt. Hey God, that there's a couple people that know about a right in the nick of time. Oh, no, 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 no. See, it's easy after you get out of the situation to forget what it was like in the situation, right? It's so easy to forget about when you were in the jam, or when you were on your knees, or when you were seeking God, when you were trying to talk to this one and that one, and trying to find out how you could get a breakthrough, but right in the... I said right in the nick of time. My God will show up right in the nick of time. Hey, God. Anybody have everybody at the job come at you? Hey, anybody have everybody in your circle come at you? Anybody seem like all your finances was breaking down? Anybody seem like everything was going crazy? Anybody ever been in a jam? Where are my friends? Where are my loved ones? How will I make it? But God stepped in right, right in the nick of time. I don't know. I, I got to write in the nick of time repertoire. I got a resume of a God that steps in right in the nick of time. Right when I thought I was going to lose it. Right when everything was falling apart. Right when everything was going to hell in a handbasket. But my God, I think I might be in the right place that somebody knows about a God. See, when you shake your head, you ain't shaking on what grandmama said, uh uh-huh. And when you nod your head, it's because you know uh, when you go ahead and you realize, uh, 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 sometimes you ain't even got a word for it, right? You just know that God has made a way uh, right in the thick of Our God, my God, my God, my God. Woo. See, sometimes we just got to think about the goodness of God. My God. Sometimes all we have to do is literally remember. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. See, I'm going to throw this out there. We don't tell enough stories in our homes. We don't share enough stories in our homes. See, I grew up in a household where we used to share stories. We sat around together, and we, and guess what? It wasn't nobody's new story. Guess what? Everybody in the house heard it before. But we look forward to hearing the story again. We tune in to hear the story about how God made a way. Right? And so we got to remember to tell our story. My God, my God. (laughs) 
Hey, she, 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 she. Hey, 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 my uh, minister Angelina said, a walking, talking testimony. A walking, you know what? I might, I, 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 I might, I, I might can use that title. I might can use that title. I might can use that title. Let's get to this word. Let's get to this word. Amen. And I'm going to put myself on a quick time. I want to, I'm going to put myself on a timer. Y'all might hear the noise. Amen. Got to write that down. Shift it. We're in, as you know, or may, may know, we're in our follow-through series. Amen? And this is the last message I'll be preaching in the follow-through series. Next month, we'll be in a new series, A Fresh Start. See, it's the eighth month. Can, is anybody can use a fresh start? Can any, any, anybody use a fresh start? Any, anybody could use certain things to just, you know what? I, it, it, it's like anything you do. Sometimes you're like, can I get a reset button? I, 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 need, I need a fresh start, you know? You know, you, you might have played the video game. You got so far on it, but, you know, you got to, let me go ahead. I lost that last life. Let me go ahead and get three more lives. I remember playing video games. Get, get three more. Get three more. I try to get further. Maybe I get a little bit further, get to a fir- another board. I don't know if they got boards anymore, but they get further in, in, uh, in, in Roblox, right, or whatever, or, or, or Minecraft, whatever it is they're playing. But the, the, the reality is, Next month is going to be a month where we're going to get it so deep in our spirits about God and our fresh start. Amen? And guess what? God can give you a fresh start right where you are in your, in your, in your job. Even though everybody knows you and you know everybody, God has the capabilities and abilities to give you a fresh start even in the same place. Right? Because, see, God has all power. And so everybody, wherever you are, are subject to God. God knows how to turn the king's heart, the queen's heart, and your heart. Even if you're the king or the queen, that God is trying to turn a heart. So I want y'all to commit to be tuned in throughout the month of August because your fresh start is on the way. Amen? Now, before we get to this fresh start, we can't just quit on this, on this last Sunday. We got to follow through. And we're going to be some walking, talking testimonies. Amen? Uh, the Scripture comes from the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter, 16th verse through 17th verse. You did not choose me, but I choose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you, this is my command, love each other. Amen? I do want to read a little bit further further up. That's my key key area, but I want you to hear a little bit prior to that. Verse 9, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in His love, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this as to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends. If you do what I command, I will no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father I have made known to you. Key scripture, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, 
love each other. Amen? Pray with me as I prepare to share on walk and talk and testimonies. Dear Father God, have your will, have your way, dear Father God. Get me out of the way that you might have your own way. In Jesus' name, that you would bless your people, that you would save, set free, heal, deliver, dear Father God, and add on to this branch of Zion. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. All right. Here we go. You know, sometimes we as believers get caught up with the world. Sometimes we as believers, if we're not cautious, if we're not wise, we'll follow more worldly wisdom than kingdom morsels than kingdom nuggets into godly instruction. And so many times we get so caught up in having our blessing. Ah. I could say I digress right there. Because, see, oftentimes people feel like their elevation can only be theirs. People are seeking. I, I had a friend, he told me this one thing. He said, you know, it's hard to be humble when you're striving to be on top. I want you just to think about that for a second. It's hard to be humble when you're striving to be on top. And so the reality is when we adopt a world system, we are only looking to be on top, meaning somebody is underneath. But I choose to believe that there's rooms that God will bring us all to. And if we get a, 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 get a kingdom mindset, we'll understand that there is room, there is space in the room. I'm going to let that marinate for a little bit. There's space in the room. You see, in this particular passage, Jesus was saying, listen, you're not like, we, we don't have no, uh, we, we got a friendship here. And because we have a friendship, you are not ignorant to what Father God desires. Because everything that my Father has shown me, I have shown you. But see, what we do is we like to withhold the information. Right? We want to give you limited information because we believe that everything is going to run out and there won't be enough available. If I, if, if, if I give up and I make up space for you, then that's going to eat away what God will have for me. But tell your neighbor you were picked. Tell your neighbor on the other side, you were picked. Tell your neighbor on the stream, just type it in, you were picked. See, a lot of times we forget that it wasn't God, it wasn't us that chose the room, but it was God that chose the rooms of elevation that he has for us. It was God that picked you. See, God picked you, God selected you, God said you qualify, but not because that you already did things to qualify, you qualified because he picked you. You didn't qualify because you were without sin. You didn't qualify because you don't have the things in order. You, you didn't qualify because you had every I dotted and every T crossed. As much as you think you do. I know y'all think y'all got all your I's dotted. I know you think you got all your T's crossed, but the devil is a liar and you don't. As soon as you realize that you don't have all your I's dotted, as soon as you realize that you don't have all your T's crossed, then you might be able to realize there's space, not just for you. Because, see, what will happen is you'll end up in the perfect room, the room with all the I's dotted, the room with all the T's crossed. But catch this. You were picked. See, the, the interesting thing is, what he wants us to share is his love that he has for us. But how do we share his love if we don't think there's enough to go around? 
How do we share God's love when we're just so concerned about me, mine, and myself? How do we share the love of God if all our focus is on just me and my house? So how do we share the love of God when it's just about me getting higher to another level? Don't you understand that God needs you to love on somebody that you might see imperfection in? See, the reality is because we're all fallible. From the clergy, to them singers, to the worshipers, we're all worshipers, right? To the virtual audience, whether you're on YouTube right now, hi, how you doing? Facebook, what's up? Or you're in here. We all, as a result of the patterns of this world, experience times where we look at somebody in a light that is below the light God wants us to look at them. I don't care who you are. I don't care how great you say you are. And, and now, now he, the reality is because of the Spirit of God, God checks us, those that walk with Him, right? He'll check us, but we have made declarations that we've never spoken. Some folks are too good to associate with some folks. Some folks, because they got this together, they can look down on somebody else's situation, but how do I spread love to you when I'm constantly reserving a space in my brain about what's wrong with you because this ain't right with you, Biggie, and so I got to look bad at Biggie, but how I'm really going to love Biggie when I'm wrapped up about what Biggie ain't got right? How I'm going to love Biggie? Because all I'm doing is acting like the world. See, the world will always find a reason to put you down. I remember I was in first grade, and my brother, my, uh, my, my brother in Georgia, he gave me a great lesson. He gave me a great lesson. He told me, he said, Chris, it don't matter how tall you are. It don't matter how short you are. It don't matter how wide, how, how thin. It doesn't matter. It don't matter if you got long hair, short hair, if you got straight hair, if you have a nappy hair. It does not matter. It doesn't matter if you are, uh, 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 if you got the, the richest, dark, uh, uh, extra melanated uh, 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 skin, or if you are light, bright, and almost <laughs> white. It doesn't matter if you're driving a Mercedes or you're driving, back then they had uh, Mopay, what was it called? May Pops. Cost $1.49, May Pops. They make your feet feel fine, right? Get them Jones at the Mortons when it existed, right? If somebody know what I'm talking about. But the whole point is, it does not matter. People will talk about you. And what happens is we were picked not to be like that. We were picked to love somebody, whether they're tall or they're short, whether they're in the best zip code or the zip code is de designated the least likely that anybody wants to be in. We need to love somebody whether we think they're cool or they're not, whether they dress well or they don't, whether they live the way we live or they do not, we need to know how to love somebody else. And don't love them with that fake love that you just love them with lip service. Don't love them with that fake love that you love them. You call yourself loving them, but in your mind you reserve, uh, oh, they, they, you know, they, they X because they don't do X the way I do X. I don't even got to throw anything out there because the reality is you already got it. You already know what you look down upon, Right? 
And so, uh, uh, and so you will disassociate yourselves from individuals based on what you have made godly, but ain't, ain't nowhere in Scripture. See, this, the, the Scripture does allow us to look at things based on kingdom purposes, how you're going to align yourself, right? Because, see, it said one that walk with sinners will be seated with them. And once you're seated with them, you'll be planted with them. And once you're planted with them, you'll be carrying it all out, right? And so you got to watch how you delve in your relationships with those things that can take you down the wrong path. See, what I realized a long time ago, because once I got saved, I was a witness. I'm going to tell you, I was a, a what you say, a, a, a walking, talking witness. I was a walking, talking witness. I was 23 years old, and I'm like, God went and saved my life. <laughs> if God could save my life, if God could save my life, don't you know? Always bring us up. He's always in the nick of time. He's always in the nick of time. Amen. Bring Tanya up. He's always in the nick of time, and God will make a way out of no way. God can make things happen. See, the reality is God can even use a miscue like this, right, to let you know that you ain't perfect. Yeah, you, went, yeah, you got your money, but so what? I don't care nothing about your money because I'll make a situation where your money can't fix because I don't care how much money you got in the midst of some of what you're going to go through. Life is going to happen. Am I right? You could have planned the best thing. You could have uh, uh, set up some wonderful stuff for your lives and for your family, and then life happens. Right? And guess what you're going to have to do? Audible. You would have to roll with the punches. But the reality is, if you don't know nothing about rolling with no punches, you're going to be a little jammed up. But you got to remember through this all that you didn't pick yourself, but God picked you. And once you realize that you were picked, then I need you to understand this part right here. You were, uh, you were appointed. Tell your neighbor you were appointed. You were appointed. I don't know about you, but it's a good thing when you get an appointment. My God almighty. My God almighty. I, I, I was so godly excited when I was able to stand on the floors of, uh, uh, of, of an annual conference and, 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 the, and, the, and the bishop was able to call my name. It wasn't really my name because they can't get my name right. Nobody can. Nobody can. Nobody can. Y'all can. I love y'all. I love you. But the paper had it right, and they were able to give me an appointment, right? They were able to say, hey, you're going to be the pastor of this here church, amen? And so uh, even while I found it, I still needed the what? Appointment. Now, we call it an assignment, but assignment ain't nothing but an appointment. And so what I want you to realize is that God has appointed you for something. God has appointed you to be one that will share his love. God has appointed you, my God, as God has appointed you as one that will go and tell somebody about the goodness of God. And so in this particular story, isn't it interesting that we hear that true love is the one who lay their life down for another? Oh, my God. And here it is. The one that's telling them about this love is the one that lays his life down. You were appointed so that you might go and bear fruit Fruit that will last. The Bible lets us know that only what we do for Christ will last. So you do that thing for yourself, it ain't going to be able to last. Right? You do that thing just because it makes you happy, it's not going to be able to last. But if you want something that will endure and that you don't just have a little bit of joy, you don't got a pinch of joy, but that your joy might be complete, then you need to do that thing that God called you to because when you work in the vein of God, when you do what God would have for you to do, when you serve the way God would have for you to serve, when you live the way God called for you to live, when you trust the way God would want for you to trust, then you're walking a talking testimony. See, you got to 
to talk so somebody can hear the testimony. It's one thing about the walk because you got to go to somebody and let somebody know. Don't expect everybody to come to you. You need to go to someone. Don't expect everybody to pick up the phone and call you. Don't expect everybody to text you and email you. Who you texting? Who you emailing? Who you calling? And who are you making a way to reach? Because God is saying, I need some vessels that are willing to walk and talk. But when you talk, share your testimony. Ah, this is very interesting. This is very interesting because we started and I was talking about, uh, uh, I don't know about you, but uh, a, a God that can uh, reach you in the what? Nick of time, right? And guess what? You ain't end up in the nick of time because you didn't go through a test. You had to have a test to need a God to show up. Am I right? Am I right, anybody? Come on, somebody can somebody say amen? Let me know I'm walking down the right lane. Somebody, am I in the, doing a lap around the right track? It, guess what? The reality is you ain't need a God in the nick of time if you ain't had no problem. You didn't need a God in the nick of time if the car didn't break down on the way to the interview and you still needed to get there to get the job. You didn't have a situation. And so God is not just asking us to walk and talk, but to tell the testimony. Oh, that means God wants us to be transparent. Oh, that means God wants us to tell the truth about what really happened. Oh, that means we're going to have to reshape our story. We're going to have to retell our narrative. We're going to have to break it down differently than we try to put on Facebook. Uh, yeah, our Instagram story might not be telling the whole truth, the, nothing but the truth. I don't know about you, but you can tell some of the truth, a bit of the truth, but the whole picture look a little different. Oh, you, you didn't tell them about how you lost your luggage. Oh, you didn't tell them about all the other things that went on. You didn't tell them about the bad bugs at the hotel. You didn't, yeah, and I believe in faith. I'm about to go on travel. I believe I ain't got none of that in Jesus' name. I, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. I, I'm believing for favor for our travels in Jesus' name. Cover it all. Give us favor upon favor. Y'all pray for us. Amen. Amen. I'm trusting and believing. But the reality is sometimes people get a glimpse of stuff and God is saying, I don't want you. See, see, we'll make an error when we've been appointed and we tell a partial story. See, we want to tell the partial story because we want to save face. We saving face, yet he died. We saving face. I mean, this. I mean, we ain't talking about like he, he, they gave him some sleeping gas and they took him out. No, he went through a torturous joint. Yeah. Torturous. Hey, hey, ain't nobody in the building that would have stood through it. Nobody in the building. I know you're tough. I know, you, I know you're rough. But he, uh, by the time they stretch you out and pierce that side. Come on now. And you didn't even have to get that far if you could have just dealt with the scourging and the bits of glass ripping your back out. If you could have just dealt with the metal and the rip and the pieces of glass that was orchestrated to rip out your back. And then you got to carry a cross. But we want to give a partial testimony. See, what we do with our testimony, we make testimony like we make cake. We don't tell them about the crack. Egg. We don't tell them about the flour on the counter. We don't tell them about the mess in the bowl. We don't tell them about what spilled. We don't tell them about the temperature. And I, 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 ooh, I hit the pan a little quick and I, mm, my finger, mm, my finger. We don't, all we want to do is dress it up and ice it up and make everything pretty and stuff. But God knows our testimonies ain't pretty. Our testimonies are nitty gritty. And we need to tell the nitty gritty testimony and how God made a way out of nowhere. We need to tell the truth and the the whole truth and nothing but the. Yeah. And when we tell those, they're undeniable. They're packed with power. When we tell those, God knows. He said, look, I picked you. I appointed you. You're already qualified for the job because I'm your nick of time, God. Yeah. And you need to go tell somebody about your nick of time without trying to pretty it up. Stop trying to put a bow tie and a bow on what God is doing in your life. The reality is this life we live ain't always pretty. Why are you worried about what people think? They ain't got no heaven. 
they ain't got no hell to put you in. Tell the real truth. Tell them you was a mess. Tell them how you messed up. Tell them how God worked it out. Tell them about the court case. Tell them about the bankruptcy. Tell them about the sickness. Tell them about the disease. Stop hiding stuff. So many people would be blessed if you stopped hiding so much. Yeah, you got a good marriage, but tell them about the one that didn't work out. Yeah, you got someone good, but tell them about the heartbreak and the mistake. Tell them, oh, y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. So you need to be able to tell somebody the whole story. You got a nice crew that you hang with, bro, but tell them about the one that backstabbed you. And how you were, you had lived your life, and you running with a crew, and all was for you, but then you turned around and felt you didn't have one. And how alone you felt. You need to tell your story. Tell your story because you were appointed not to tell mine, but to tell yours. We walking around like plastic Christians. Pretty images of real ones. But God is saying, if you'll be a real one, watch what I'll do. I already picked you. I, and then when I picked you, I didn't pick you to be a replication of something that you is a figment of your imagination. No, I picked you to be you. You are already good the way I made you. Just I don't mean that we got everything right, but you're already good. You just need to keep growing. You just need to keep learning. You need to keep serving and keep following my direction, and I will carry you through. So once we realized that we were picked, and then we realized that we were appointed, good God almighty, I don't know about this. See, yeah, I get a little excited right here. Y'all about to make me, good God, I don't know, this might be the victory lap, somebody. Uh, see, you were picked. Uh, tell your neighbor you were picked. Tell your neighbor you were appointed. You were appointed. Tell your neighbor you are, you are anointed. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good part. Come on, Joe. That's a good part right there. See, you were picked, right? So God, despite all the, oh, everybody on the earth, he picked you, my God. And then after you were picked, he appointed you. He gave you a job to do. But guess what? We're able to see that if we do our job, we're able to walk in our anointing. See, we can go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Yeah. Right? Come on, come on, come on. Let's see. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Check this out, though. This is my command. Love each other. It's a real simple message today. You're going to have to learn how to love each other. The ones that get on your last nerve. Huh? Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And I was even thinking about that emergency box, breaking case of emergency nerve. I was going to save that for the end of the month. I was going to use that one on the end of the month. God will make a way in the next month. God will make a way because oftentimes we wonder why things aren't working well. Well, the reality is many of us are just walking and talking. Y'all catch that? Many of us are walking and talking. We even post we even tell people about, we'll put a good God post up. But God is looking for some testimonies. Because see, testimonies point to him, not you. See, a good testimony doesn't point to you. It points to the God in you. It, you got a testimony? 
all right, all right, all right, all right. I normally don't do this, but I, can you do it in a minute? Okay, well, I'm going to let you do it at the close. All right, we do it at the close, amen. That's why y'all got to be in-house. You get it all, you get it all, you get it all, you get it all, you get it all if you're in-house. But feel free to be virtual. We thank you for worshiping, amen. But there's something about being in the house of God. And I need you to understand that God has some blessings marked out for you. But you're going to have to have a testimony, right? Because real testimonies bear fruit. They do. They do because they're, you can't argue with reality, right? People will wrestle us with the reality of the Bible. But if you got a doctor's report, if the doctor gave you so many days to live and you're yet alive, uh, you, could, you could talk about whatever, but here's my report. And here I am in the flesh. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They sent the letter, said I'd be out of the house. That was five years ago. I just need you to know my God is a way maker. I, I don't know about you. I didn't, I didn't have a job. I didn't have a job for uh, whatever insert period of time. I still ate. I'm still breathing. I'm still yet alive. I look at it right now. My car in the shop say a month and a half to get the park. But you know what? I still here at church. God made a way. Right? So I'm getting where I need to be even though I don't have my wheels. Amen? Because God is a what? Way maker. You know, sometimes people need to know what you go through. But we don't want people to know because we want to save face. But God didn't make us to be plastic. He made us to be real. He's looking for some actual living, walking, talking testimonies. Because to bear fruit, I was researching what bear fruit means. It means it has good results. That means there ought to be some fruit to your, to your walk with Christ. You ought to be able to look, and I'm believing in faith. That by the, anybody want to bear fruit this year? Yeah. By sign of hands, who wants to bear fruit this year? Amen. If you want to bear fruit this year, then what we're going to be believing is what the Bible believes and not what we believe. Amen. The Bible believes that for us to bear fruit, that we need to start telling some testimonies and that we should see some people come into the kingdom of God. Amen. And if you're not ready uh, yet, to tell people and to pray the prayer with salvation with them, invite them to church. Invite them to Bible study. See, my Bible study crew, they got a challenge this week. See, the Bible study crew, they, I, I, I'm maturing them in a way, and they're developing their spiritual muscles. So the Bible study goal for this week is that everybody on there will be witnessing and bringing someone to Bible study this week. Amen? Can we do this at the church? The Bible study was all in. Is the church all in? Yeah. Amen. So what I'm expecting on next week, that uh, then when, when Minister Angelina comes to preach, that you will have invited somebody to come with you. Amen. And then what we'll do is we're going to keep on working and see what God will do. And guess what? Some people will only wor worship virtual. Invite them to, vir to worship virtually. Amen. But as we stretch our Bible study uh, group, we're going to study our congregation, amen, online. I'm going to ask you if you're online, invite somebody. You be on here next week, but invite somebody to be here with you on next week too. When we are able to produce results, God says, it's right here, so that, <laughs> I want to end, but you need to catch the so that part. He's letting us know, you got to do this so that I can do this. See, the problem is we want this, but we don't want to do the that. But when we do the that, it says, and so that whatever you ask in my name, my Father will give you. If you want something from the Father, 
you've already been anointed, you need to start telling your testimonies. And maybe you need to start telling your testimonies to somebody different. Because you keep talking to the same people, maybe they tuned out on you. Maybe they're too close to the vest. And you might need to pick somebody out. Maybe it's a coworker. Maybe it's an old high school or college friend. Maybe it's an old sandbox. But you never really talked to them about this because you uh, are mindful of them not interested in going to church. But God is interested in their salvation. And so let's choose God's path. Amen? Don't have the type of clothes I normally would. But I just want to let you know that God is looking for some walking, talking testimonies. And when he looks for them, I want to be one of them. Amen? Standing all over the church. I just want to read the scripture one more time so you let it sink in. You did not choose me, but I chose you. You were picked, people, and appointed. You, you were appointed so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. You don't remember anything else. When you leave out of here, go and love somebody. Love somebody. Love somebody. And I do want to make a call. If you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior of your life, right now, uh, the opportunity is here. Just pray with me. Let us all pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, say it strong. Say it strong. Dear Lord Jesus, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Help me to live your way and not my own. I know now I am saved. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. If you're at home, put your hands together. Now, if that was your first time praying the prayer for salvation in the building, just wave your hand. Wave your hand. If that was your first time, it's all right. Wave your hand. If you're online, if you're online, just type first time, first time. Amen. Next call. If you don't have a church home, where you're learning, where you're growing, where you're serving, and where you're covered. It's time for you to get anchored, amen? It's time for you to get anchored, amen? If you don't have a church home where you're learning, where you're growing, where you're serving, and where you're anchored, then what I want you to do right now, if you're in the house, come on down to the altar, take a preacher's hand, but give God your heart. And if you're online, just type, sign me up. Just type, sign me up. Prayer warriors, y'all praying right now? Amen. Amen. Is there one? Is there one that wants to give their life to Christ? Is there one that says, you know what? I want to make love and me church, my church home. Amen. I believe that God is speaking to somebody. Amen. I pray he has his will and has his way. Amen. Because we understand what God will do when he anchors his people. Amen. Is there one? If you're online, just type sign me up to join. If you're in the house, you can walk on down. Now, if you want to get if for salvation type, I did it. Well, come on down. Either way, the doors of the church are open. Amen. Mm -hmm. Come on, sing that. Is there one? Is there one on YouTube? Is there one on Facebook? Amen. Is there one in the building? Amen. 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 We're going to have a closing word of prayer, benediction, and then after I close, we're going to have testimony. Amen. Dear Father God, we come humbly before you, giving you honor, glory, and praise. We ask that you would have your will in your way. We ask, dear Lord, that you would help us to follow through. You know, let's not just give part of the testimony, but the whole testimony. Help us to reach somebody that they might come to know you as Lord and Savior, that they would be empowered and strengthened, O oh God. Dear Lord, we give you the honor, glory, and praise. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the people of God said, amen. Now may the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with us until we come again. God bless you. Amen. We're going to...
Amen. Amen. We're going to close out here, and then we're going to have our testimony. Amen. 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 God. All right, social media family. God bless you. We love you. Peace and blessings. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall. But you have never failed me. Waiting for a change to come, knowing the best. Still you have never failed me yet. No. Your promise still stands. Great is your faith.